Hey guys, it's Miss Jessica, and today we're going to review our Greek art. Now, we talked a lot about Greek art during our classes, and I want us to try to remember as much as we can of that today. All right, go ahead, grab those pencils and papers, and let's begin to study Greek art. Well, we are going to now begin our review for Greek art history. Now, we had a lot of things to talk about, so let's go ahead and begin with our who. Who were the Greek people that we wanted to talk about? Now, the first set of people were the military leaders. Now, remember, in Greece, there was a lot of wars that went on, and so the military leaders are very important to them. Also, their gods and their goddesses. So those are the three really important types of people in Greek history. The military leaders, the gods, and the goddesses. Now, a couple of each, as an example, would be Alexander the Great. He was a very, very famous person, Alexander the Great, for military leaders. The god Zeus, remember he was the father of all gods, and Athena, the goddess of war. So when I ask you these questions, first I'd ask you, who were the three types of people that were important for the Greeks? And you would say, military leaders, gods, and goddesses. Then I would ask someone, who, what is one example of a military leader? Then you would say, Alexander the Great. Then at the same thing I'd ask, who is an example of a Greek god we talked about? And you would say Zeus. Now again, there's many different military leaders, gods, and goddesses, but these are the three that I am looking for and that you will get points for. So remember these cards that you see here. Now you might know where Greek, uh, our Greek people are from, but I'm going to go ahead and just show you guys anyway. Greek people are from Greece. <laughs> now, there's no specific island anywhere like last time. It is just Greece, the whole country. Um, so I feel like we'll be pretty good on that one. Let's go ahead now and talk about what. What did the Greek people create? And they created a lot of things, as you see in my image above. So one of the first things uh, to talk about is their architecture. And architecture are the buildings, just like you see here. One very famous building that we're going to talk about is the Parthenon. The Parthenon. That's actually where Athena is. It's her temple. It's her building they created for her. Um, questions like that, I would say, what is one famous piece of architecture made by the Greeks? And you would say the Parthenon. Now, just like last time, there's many things that this could fall under. There's a lot of architecture, but this is the one building I am looking for. A bonus question I might even ask is, who is this building built for? And you could say Athena. The next thing is sculpture. Sculpture is very important to the Greek people. And remember, their sculpture so showed no flaws. They didn't want to show the flaws of people. They wanted them to look Perfect. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these different things as well, and then we'll move on. All right, now we need to talk about the why, and that will help us know more about our sculptures. So why did the Greek people create their art? Well, we kind of already talked about this one, but it's the human ideal. That means the perfect person. They wanted their sculptures to look perfect and have no flaws, just like we saw. So that's going to be important to know about their sculptures looked perfect. That would be the question I'd ask. I'd say, uh, were Greek sculptures real, realistic, or perfect? And you could say they looked perfect. If you said human ideal, I would probably even give you a little bit of uh, bonus points there because that is a, a good term to know. And they wanted to show the athletes. So we kind of talked about that with Aegean art um, because the Olympics came from Greece. And so they wanted to show the athletic form of a person. So I might even ask you, um, why did they create their art? Who are they trying to show? And you could say athletes. And then I would maybe as a bonus question would ask you, why were they trying to show athletes in Greece? And you could say, because they created the Olympics. All right, we have one more, and it's the how. This is going to be one of the most important ones of all. How did they create their art? Now, for sculpture, they just created the sculptures they wanted, but what I'm going to focus on is their buildings, and they used columns to build. And remember, we talked a lot about our columns for our art class. There were three different kinds of columns. The first one is a Doric column. 
Remember, that was the most simple. And the word, remember I kind of told you a trick, is the word Doric just seems kind of plain. It's small, doesn't sound that fancy, so it's the first and most simple. The next one is Ionic, an Ionic column. It's a little fancier. The word's still short, but Ionic sounds a little nicer than Doric. And my next, last one is Corinthian. Now remember, this is our fanciest column, the Corinthian column. It's the longest word. It sounds very fancy. So those are our three columns I want you to remember. Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. All right, so we are going to begin to look at the images of all of the what portion for Greek art. Now let's begin with this image you see here. This is architecture. And we talked about architecture, but most specifically, it is the Parthenon. Um, so when I show you guys this image for class, I want you guys to notice, let me zoom in for you, that it has a lot of columns. That's going to be one way to tell what it is. Um, and there's this part right up here. And it's supposed to be kind of pointed, but you can tell over time it was worn away. So when you see this image, I'm going to ask you, um, what is this an example of? And you would say architecture. And then I would ask, does anyone know the name of the building? And you would say the Parthenon. Bonus question would be, who was this building created for? And then I would say, and then you would say it was created for Athena. So that's something pretty cool to try to remember as well. Now our next one, I'll leave that there for you, that we're gonna talk about is the sculpture. Now this is just a random picture of a sculpture from a Greek, from the Greek time period. But remember, our thing we're noticing is there's no flaws. The face on the sculpture looks very perfect. They were trying to make people look perfect. There's no wrinkles, there's no bags under the eyes. Everything looks very smooth. Even the way that his body looks, he's a little more muscular. He, they, uh, the Greek people tried to make their art sculptures look real. Here's one more sculpture to look at. And again, you're gonna notice that the whole person almost looks like they're an athlete. And that's what they try to show as athletic people. Now, more specifically, this is Zeus, the Greek god. Now, I probably won't be asking you that question. Um, it might be a bonus question. So what to look out for for Zeus is he usually has big beard and is carrying some sort of lightning in his hands. Well, we learned a lot about the Greek people, and I hope you guys remembered as much as you can. I would say the most important thing out of today is those columns. If you guys can remember all three, that is amazing. Well, my name is Miss Jessica, and I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye.